How are you doing folks? This is the Pop Music Freak back with another Song Facts Countdown video counting down my 1,000 favorite songs of all time. Uh, we're at number 929 is a classic love song from the 60s, the mid-60s by a Los Angeles group called The Association who were absolutely red hot for about two years. Between 1966 and 68 they had one hit after another one, classic song after another, and then like a lot of 60s groups did, faded out suddenly, poof, and were pretty much forgotten within a few years. So that's the story of the association. <laughs> but this uh, ended up being one of their biggest hits, and is definitely considered a classic 60s love song. The song is Cherish. I'll give you the song facts on this song right now. Cherish is a pop song written by Terry Kirkman and recorded by the association, released in 1966. The song reached number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 in September of that year and remained in the top position for three weeks. Billboard ranked the record as the number seven song of 1966 and later as number two after a revision of the year-end charts. It was certified gold by the RIAA in the U.S. in 1966. In Canada, the song also reached number one. So, let me tell you the story about the song itself. Um, Terry Kirkman wrote it in half an hour and put it into the live act of his group, The Association. He was looking for an emotional, slow tempo song in the same vein as The Righteous Brothers, You've Lost That Loving Feeling. Uh, Mike Wellen from the New Christie Minstrels liked it so much that he convinced the Minstrels to record a version of the song. And in fact, their recording was almost released before The Association's. In the lyrics, the protagonist tells his love interest that he cherishes her, though he isn't sure if he actually loves her or only wants her. At the same time, he's unsure that love interest is interested in him, because she is being courted by a thousand other guys. <laughs> okay, as for the recording of the song. The instrumentation of their debut, which includes this song, was recorded at a converted garage studio owned by Gary S. Paxton, who engineered the sessions along with Pete Romano, while the vocals of the group were recorded at Columbia Studios. Like most of the association's hits, session musicians were called in to do the instrumental track, including Mike Deasy on guitar, Jerry Sheff on bass, and Jim Troxell on drums, and only Kirkman and Jules Alexander as members of the band participating on it. Kurt uh, Bocher added some vocals, most notably the high fit pitch told you and hold you on the final verse. The song is notable for having two bridge sections, the second leading to a modulation in which the key rises a whole step. The song ends with the words cherish is the word over a sustained uh, vibrato electric guitar chord. For the single release, the song was speeded up uh, and one of the two and they do cherish you lines near the end was removed. This was done to hold the track to the three minute mark. As AM radio programmers frowned on songs that went longer than that. However, even with the edit, the song still ran over. Instead of editing further, producer Kurt Bocher intentionally listed 300 on the label as the song's running time. Critical reception. In a retrospective review published in, in uh, Stereo Gum in 2018, uh, Tom uh, Brian wrote, There are things about Cherish that should be good, things that look nice on paper. The association were skiing in lush, Beach Boys-esque harmonies, and they were doing it over intricately layered guitars and banjos and horns. But Cherish is a bloodless affair, a sickly sweet melody backing up a somewhat creepy lyric about fixation, fixating too hard on a girl. In his conclusion, he wrote, Songs like this, vaguely queasy, pop songs with lush and lightly orchestral arrangements would pretty much dominate pop music for a few years in the early 70s. The association got there first, but they don't get any points for it. <laughs> Conversely, Terry Latata writes, Cherish was wonderful. Its sensual harmonies and simple sentiments produced the ideal dreamy atmosphere for a last dance. Aftermath. Cherish has become a staple in wedding ceremonies and slow dances, and is considered the 22nd most played song of the 20th century by the BMI. In 2012, original association member Jim Yester said 
The record label claimed the song sounded too old and archaic, but quipped that the song's success just showed we can have archaic and eat it too. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> so, let's see. So, basically... Uh, in terms of who appeared on the song and who played on the song, it's everyone I mentioned earlier, so I'm not going to repeat it. Um, so, giving you the rundown on the charts, of course, I mentioned it hit number one on Billboard Hot 100 for three weeks. Uh, it also hit number one in Canada, and it hit number 38 on the U.S. Adult Contemporary Chart on Billboard. Now, in terms of remakes, there's one no very notable remake. David Cassidy from the Patrick Partridge family did a little a solo record on the side of the Partridge family and released this as the first single, and it ended up being a hit again, going to the top 10 at the very end of 1971. Um, actually, it was released in October 71, and hit around December into January of 72. Um, did pretty decent performance on it, actually did better on the adult contemporary chart than the original, going to number one on the adult contemporary chart. Number nine on the pop chart, number two in the UK, uh, David Cassidy was pretty big in the UK, early 70s. In New Zealand, it hit number 5. In Canada, it hit number 3. In Australia, it hit number 2. In some places, it actually did better than the association version. Uh, other artists who have recovered, covered the song... <laughs> Let's break out the list. Dizzy Gillespie, The Letterman, Nina Simone, Ed Ains, Petula Clark, Rita Wilson, The Four Tops, Carla Thomas, Joe DeCy, Barry Manilow, Pat... Metheny, Kenny Rogers in the first edition, and Glee. <laughs> uh, combined the Madonna Cherish song with this song, which is interesting. Uh, so, yes, so a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon of recording this song. It was a pretty, pretty good, good song for its time. It was a pretty song. It really was. What they tried to do, they made the best record they could. You know, they were a pretty good group. They're a pretty good group. I'm surprised they didn't stick around a little longer in terms of being popular. But that's how it goes. That's how the 60s were. There were a lot of groups that were red hot for like a year and then poof, stopped having it. It's, it's one of those things. Buckingham's did that. Uh, Moms and Papas were only big for about a year and a half. Uh, what else? Gary Puckett and the Union Gap, year and a half. You know, that's the kind of way the 60s were. Weren't the Beatles or the Stones or the Supremes or the Temptations or the Beach Boys or the Four Seasons? <laughs> Everyone else kind of was like a year and after, basically. All right, so that's the story of Cherish from the Association, number 929 on my list of my 1,000 favorite songs of all time. This is the song Facts Countdown. I hope you're enjoying this. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the bell to notify you when the next video is coming on. I have 928 to go, plus whatever requests gather up over the period. I'm going to try to get two to three a day done because I'd like to get this done in under a year. <laughs> then, I could, then I could make videos about something else. <laughs> Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I wish you all peace and love.